this room, there were 31 graves under the floor. 31 okay. skeletons were dug up. Will you join us in the chapter house, which was part of Merton Priory? Are there any spirits of maybe railwaymen or, or navvies that built the line? Or anyone to do with the railway here? If so, I'd love to hear from you. So, uh, when they were excavating uh, this site, they, uh, on the whole site, they come across over 700 bodies. Can you come and take a seat next to me? Nine hundred years ago, this was once part of Merton Priory. It was the size of Westminster Abbey. It was once England's most important centres of religion and learning. All that now remains are the foundations of the chapter house. This part of the Priory was built around 1130 and was used as a meeting room where the monks would assemble to discuss business. The monks of Merton Priory, or canons as they were known, belonged to an order of St Augustine and their duty was to preach the gospel to the public. The monks lived, slept, ate, washed, studied, worked and looked after the sick. The Priory was not just a place of worship but many other things, a school, a hospital, a farm and a guest house. It was the source of employment for many local people, especially the masons, carpenters and craftsmen. The most famous pupil to the Priory was Thomas Beckett. He studied for some years from the age of 10 and went on to become the Archbishop of Canterbury in 1162.
On Christmas Day, 1170, Becket displayed harsh words towards fellow bishops at the Canterbury Cathedral. Henry II took this as a summons to action and sent four of his knights to the cathedral. They found Becket at the altar. The four knights attacked and butchered him by cracking open his skull. His last words were, May they all be damned by Jesus Christ. Thomas Becket's remains were placed beneath the floor in the crypt of the cathedral. The priory was abandoned in 1538 during the dissolution under King Henry VIII. In the 1920s, local antiquarian Colonel H.F. Bidder began an excavation and revealed the location and ground plan of the Priory buildings. There were further digs in the 1960s and 1970s, but the most extensive were in 1988 to 1990 when the remains of all the buildings revealed and under the floor a discovery of 31 bodies. These bodies were set out in orderly rows and the graves had been well marked. It was common practice for priors to be buried in the chapter house, and the only legitimate tomb inscription found was an incomplete copper alloy plate suggesting the grave of prior Michael Kimpton, who died in 1413. A total of 738 medieval burials were found on the whole of the priory site. Well, hi, John. Uh, thanks for asking us along. Um, can you give us a, a brief history of Merton Priory? Probably not a brief one, Jeff. It's been here for 900 years. I mean, there's quite a lot of history. But it, you wouldn't think so. You're standing actually in a museum, and it's the remains of the chapter house of Merton Priory. The chapter house was like a, the meeting room of a, a great abbey or a priory. And that's all we've got, of course, the, the foundations, because all these places were knocked down by Henry VIII 500 and more years ago. But this one is most peculiar because it's under a concrete road bridge and it's next to a pylon behind me. And it's the other side next to an enormous supermarket in a supermarket car park. And it's just great. You've got a, a pizza hut and a, a Kentucky fried chicken next door over there. Nobody would know that something very historic was here but it is an extraordinary relic and there are piles of uh, stone mortared flint uh, which were the foundations of this old building it was an extraordinary uh, priory because it was part of, ma had a major part in English history yeah it goes back 900 years um, the kind of thing that it would have um, seen is, for example, the meeting of the first parliament here in, in 1236. It was here in Merton Priory, and because the chapter house was the meeting room, it would have taken place here. Okay. Uh, 400 years after, or 300 years after that, Henry VIII's commissioners came round here, and um, the, the deed was signed, and the place was raised to the ground, and all the bits and pieces from it, the stones and the timber and the lead, were taken down the road in, I think it's something like 3,000 horse and cart journeys to a place called Nunsuch, which is near Epsom and Ewell. And uh, that's where he built um, Epsom, that's where he built Nunsuch Palace, which was an, an enormous, glorious palace. Yeah. 
that no longer exists either. So what happened was that Merton Priory, very important in its day, a very important school, a very important um, hospital, a very important uh, centre for all kinds of social activity, as well as, of course, a place of prayer and a place where monks lived, um, was completely obliterated in 1536, having stood for 500 years. Oh, no, I'm, I get my maths wrong, 400 years. And so was its successor, um, Nonsuch Palace. So, in a way, both these places are rather go They're like ghosts, in a way. The, the buildings are like ghosts. And this, this building, all that's left, you'll see on, on the pictures, uh, are just, just piles of mortared flint, which were once the foundations of an enormous stone a abbey, really, like a priory is an abbey. Um, if you want to know roughly what it looked like, uh, how about Westminster Abbey, which was the same length, 300 feet long? A huge place. A colossal and a very important place with a huge place in constitutional and legal history. The first law in the English statute book was passed in this room. Yeah. And many things took place. Um, I'd, I've always felt that there was a presence here. There was an extraordinary atmosphere. We may be under a road on slabs of concrete, but, but I, I think that the, the, the kind of spirit we have here is a very benign one. In this room, in the chapter house, yeah, I mean, you're familiar with going into large churches and finding graves under the floor. Yeah. In this room, there were 31 graves under the floor. 31 okay. skeletons were dug up. I assume, because it was a very important place, that they were the, the priors, the, the, the big noises, the important people. But um, I don't know. Nobody quite knows, but they would have been, they would have had some privilege, I think. And those, those, those skeletons were all examined and reburied, but they were all in this room, and some of them would have died of the plague. The plague was, was something, we, we think of COVID and that sort of stuff now, but every hundred years or so in the medieval period, there were scores of people dying right, left and centre in plagues. Yeah, yeah. So we just don't know what has, has passed really. All we've got now is, is just a ghost, if you like, of a once glorious and huge building. Well, John, thank you so much for your time, for that thank, little thank you for brief coming. piece of history. Thank you so much. We have our static night vision cams in position and our investigation starts at the chapter house. We join us in the chapter house, which was part of Merton Priory. Now Merton Priory dates back to the 12th century. Uh, it was quite a big establishment. As I say, we're in the chapter house, as you can see, well, you should be able to see round me. I'm stood slap bang in the centre of it. Now this had long been forgotten, and it was um, only really when they wanted to uh, change the road layout and Transport for London started to put the road in that they uncovered these ruins and because English Heritage stepped in Transport for London were told you can't uh, tarmac over it hence why above us there is a flyover and uh, these ruins have been preserved now my understanding is the chapter house was used as a meeting place for the monks, or as they were known at that time as abbots. So what I'd like to do initially is introduce myself. My name is Phil, and the reason why I'm here is because I'd like to talk to you. An EVP is received on Phil's digital recorder telling us to get out. 
Here is the enhanced audio. So what I'd like to do initially is introduce myself. My name is Phil. So what I'd like to do initially is introduce myself. My name is Phil. Now it might be a bit strange if you can see us wondering what we're doing stood in the middle of your your building. As I've said, we're here to talk to you to find out more about the history and what you did here and how you lived. Can you see me? Can you hear my voice? Another EVP is captured on the digital recorder. Our child's voice, which may be saying daddy, but we cannot be sure. Here is the audio enhanced. Can you hear my voice? Can you hear my voice? What I'm holding in my hand, in my right hand, is a small little device which will record your voice. It will enable me to listen to you. As you notice, there's a, a little red light on it. If you come up and you talk into it, it won't do you any harm but it will let me hear you and it will let me know that you're here. You may also notice there is a light on the floor. Again, it won't do you any harm, but if you come up near it, it may light up more, may illuminate more. The sound of footsteps is heard, and as you can see, we are all standing still. But if you come up near it, it may light up more, may illuminate more. But if you come up near it, it may light up more may illuminate more. It's quite a strange feeling standing under a very modern structure and yet around me history which is you know 900 years old. It's quite a loud bang then, wasn't it? A voice asks Phil, did you die? This is then followed by a loud bang and then another voice saying, be careful. Here is the enhanced audio. And yet, around me, history which is, you know, 900 years old. It's quite a loud bang then, wasn't it? And yet, 
around me history which is, you know, 900 years old. It's quite a loud bang then, wasn't it? We head over to where the stone coffins are located, which were discovered during the excavation of the Priory. So, uh, when they were excavating uh, this site, they, uh, on the whole site, they come across over 700 bodies, and inside here, the chapter house, there was over 30, and um, as you can see, there's like stone coffins all along here, um, and on one of the coffins, there was a partial nameplate from the 1400s and the name on it was Michael Kimpton. Um, now, these priors, these monks, or as they were known back in them days, canons, um, the more senior of the monks would have been buried inside these stone coffins. And as you can see, there's a few along here. Some of them are, some of them are intact, some of them slightly broken. So, uh, okay, let's take a seat. If there are any of the priors here, is it possible you can come forward and make yourself known, please? If Michael Kimpton is here, could you come and take a seat? Who's in charge here? I would like to speak to the person in charge. As I asked to speak to the person in charge, a shadow in the shape of a figure moves along the wall in the far corridor and it is captured on our Static Cam 3. We've been talking a lot tonight about the priory and the ground. Well, not long ago, there was actually a railway station here called Mern Abbey Railway Station and an extensive goods yard. And it was part of the Southern Railway. Upon the railway finishing and everything to do with it being moved, and obviously, them excavating for the road was when they actually found the remains of the chapter house. But what I want to ask is, are there any spirits of maybe railwaymen or, or navvies that built the line? Or anyone to do with the railway here? If so, I'd love to hear from you. Could you tell me your name or what you did on the railway? Now the railway closed to passengers in 1935 and then went on a, few, a fair few more years to do, uh, and, the good, and it closed to goods in 1975. I'm sure there were hundreds of people that worked on the railway and there was a nearby steel mill which is now where Sainsbury's stands. If you worked on a railway or had something to do with the railway, could you now make a noise for us so we can hear you, please?
Or as we were saying before, if there's anyone to do with the chapter house, could you make a noise for us? There's lots and lots of stuff you can make noises on in here. You can move gravel, throw gravel, tap on some of the artefacts. So could you make a noise for us if there's anyone here from either the railway era or the cannons that used to frequent the chapter house? There was no evidence caught during Mark's EVP session, so we leave the chapter house to prepare for the last session of the investigation. And, whilst we are outside, our static cam 2 captures a shadow figure that seems to rise up out of one of the stone coffins and walks along the far wall before disappearing into a doorway. Here is the original footage, followed by the footage enhanced. I just wanted to say not to be worried about any of the equipment that we've got around the chapter house. The equipment's just to help us see you and hear you. Now there's, I've got another digital recorder here, it's quite sensitive and if you can see the red light. If you speak into that red light it should record your voice and then we can play it back and hear what you're saying. So I'm just going to put that down there. So at any time if you want to speak into that red light or indeed speak into this red light then please do so. So um, as I was saying earlier um, Thomas, Thomas Beckett was brought up here in the Priory from the age of 10 and he became the Archbishop of Canterbury. But uh, he was very outspoken and I believe it was King Henry that sent some of his knights there to speak to him and an argument started and they killed him. And Thomas his remains are inside, I guess, it, it looks like a small casket, and that's in Canterbury Cathedral. Um, but um, do you remember Thomas? Do you remember Thomas when he was here? I guess you taught him the ways of religion and I guess he went to school here and lived here. So Thomas, if there's something that you can do to let us know that you can hear my voice, please move something, even throw something at me, I don't mind. At least I know that you're here and that you're listening. Now I guess I must be sitting on top of where lots of the skeletons were found.
Can you come and take a seat next to me? I felt the floor move behind me and I heard footsteps right up behind me. Can you come and take a seat next to me? When we review the footage and audio, the footsteps are louder on Static Cam 1. Here is the audio taken from Static Cam 1. Hi there. I heard you. Sorry, you made me jump. Can you tell me your name, please? I heard you come walking up behind me. Are you still here? Where did you go? That was from behind us. Yeah. You see it over the, in that corner. Hello? Who's there? An unexplained sound comes from behind us and there is also a voice before the loud banging sound that is saying, continue. Here is the audio with enhancements. Where did you go? Where did you go? Can you see us? If you can see us now, can you make another noise? Move something? Maybe you're attached to one of the artifacts in here. Maybe you can touch one of us, even push one of us. Is that possible? Can you do that? We receive a message on the sensitive digital recorder that I am holding, a voice telling us that nobody can be back here. Maybe you can touch one of us, even push one of us. Is that possible? Can you do that?
Maybe you can touch one of us, even push one of us. Is that possible? Can you do that? We complete our investigation at the chapter house. It's hundreds of years of history that has been uncovered and there is still much more to tell. And the evidence that the spirits over many centuries still dwell within its walls. <laughs>